Hi, I'm Spencer Lookaball, and this is my review of the new Canon EOS RP mirrorless camera. The folks at Midwest Photo were kind enough to hook me up with this camera for a week to see what I thought about it. As someone that wasn't much of a Canon shooter for the past few years, I didn't really know what to expect going into it, but I ended up really being pleasantly surprised uh, by the time I finished this week that I had with the camera. There were a lot of things that I really ended up liking about it that I'll talk about, but the first one that I think is the most important is the image quality. Now, a ton of people talk about Canon image quality and it's been a big draw for video shooters and photographers alike for a really long time, but this was definitely no letdown in that regard. At the time that I shot all the images for this review, there was no raw file support in Lightroom or Capture One or like any of those programs. So all the images that I was reviewing on the back of the camera and on my computer were just JPEGs right out of the camera using all their various picture profiles that they have available. I use the standard one most of the time just because you know it's kind of what's set on there and it works pretty well. And one thing that I found was that the, the images were just you know nice and saturated, not overly so, not really desaturated. Uh, the skin tones were awesome and I'll put a couple portraits up on the screen so you can all check those out and get a look at that. Um, that was one thing that I thought was really cool. If you're somebody that shoots people a lot, um, this camera really is going to excel with the skin tones. I thought that was great. Um, but really the big thing with the color on this and just the image quality in general is that it was so good right out of the camera on the JPEGs that if you're someone that's going to use the Wi-Fi feature to transfer an image to a phone or tablet and share directly from there and not really go onto a computer to do any editing. This might be the camera for you just because of how nice the photos are right off the memory card. It lets you do pretty minimal work while still getting really, really good images. And if you want a camera for just general everyday shooting, that sort of extends as well. So whether you're traveling and using this for vacation or just want to have like a good high quality camera with you out and about, I think this is really a great option. Uh, and if you are someone that wants to be a little bit more uh, serious with how you deal with the images, if you want to edit them, if you like printing, the camera does actually have really good resolution at about 26 megapixels. It shares the same sensor as the 6D Mark II, one of their full frame DSLRs. So that resolution, of course, came over with that same sensor and 26 megapixels will let you print pretty big. So if you like to share your work that way, if you like to make a physical copy of your photo, even really big prints, you'll have, I think, a really good experience printing images out of this camera. So with the just general image quality and good resolution, that actually makes a really good pairing no matter where you're at on how you uh, like to share your images with people. One of the other things about the camera that was very much talked about when it was announced is that it also, like the Canon EOS R, their first full frame mirrorless camera to come out, um, it also has a screen that articulates around and lets you see yourself while you're shooting. So if you're somebody who likes to take selfies or if you like to take family photos that way, it actually makes it a lot easier. And other than the EOS R that Canon came out with a few months ago, this is really one of the only other full frame cameras that has that articulating screen. Canon has done it with a lot of their crop sensor cameras and various other brands have done it in a bunch of different ways. But as far as full frame cameras go, it's still a pretty rare feature and this has it. So if that's important to you, that is definitely one thing to check out. The screen also is a touch screen and lets you control a pretty big portion of the camera through that. So if you're somebody that doesn't like to dive into the menu all the time while you're shooting, you can actually control the camera just through the quick menu through the touchscreen and everything like that. And it's actually really intuitive and responsive. And that was one thing I kind of liked. There are a lot of touchscreen cameras that haven't employed that feature super well in the past year or so, but this one actually worked great. I enjoyed using it for the first time ever. And so that was just a kind of a nice thing to have. Um, and you know, the camera didn't feel confusing and like I was digging for things. It's just literally right there at your fingertips. Of course, I do have to talk about the autofocus and like the C100 and C200 cinema cameras that Canon has, the EOS RP actually has dual pixel autofocus. And for those of you that don't know what that is, it's basically an autofocus technology that Canon has that helps cameras uh, do better with tracking autofocus and using the continuous autofocus setting, making them more accurate and more reliable in terms of actually tracking the subject through the frame. And it's pretty unusual to see that on a camera at this price point from Canon or any other manufacturer for that matter with good tracking autofocus. But I was pleasantly surprised that for still photography, while it's not the absolute fastest ever, the dual pixel autofocus actually helped the camera to be really, really accurate. If you need that maximum speed, I would definitely look at one of their SLRs like the 5D or the 1DX or something like that. But actually worked really well for a lot of moving subjects with still photography and with video as well. So if you're a vlogger and you wanna use this in conjunction with the flip out screen, this actually makes a really good vlogging camera because of that nice tracking autofocus. It'll help you keep yourself in focus, but also anything else you're shooting so you don't have to fill with the focus ring on the lens, which 
you know, as anybody that's tried vlogging knows, is super impractical. Autofocus is definitely another win for this camera, something that pleasantly surprised me for a camera in this price point, and it's not perfect by any means. Really, really functional. I think it's just like another check mark on the list of good things going on with this camera. The video quality on the EOS RP is actually really good. I have no real qualms about it. It performs pretty similarly to a lot of the other cameras in its price range. There is one kind of weird caveat that I don't know if this is a permanent thing. It feels like something that could be fixed in a firmware, but right now in 1080p, the camera doesn't shoot 24 frames a second. You're limited to 30 and 60 frames a second. And if you're a vlogger or you just want to use this to sort of document your travels and things like that, 30 and 60p will work absolutely fine. There's no problem with that. But if you want to shoot interviews or a lot of dialogue or want to do like some short films and things like that, you will need 24 frames a second usually. Now in 4K, you can get 24 frames a second recording. You will just kind of eat through a little bit more card space. So you'll have to be prepared for that. And you will also get a crop on the sensor. So you'll lose the, the full frame video. But again, it could be, I think, a firmware fix. They could add 24 frames a second recording into 1080p resolution. So this might not be a permanent thing. And of course, as of recording right now, I don't know what they're gonna do. So just be aware that if you're looking at the EOS R, just evaluate kind of what it is you're doing with video and if this is gonna be a limiting factor or if you think that you could uh, live with that and have enough card space to shoot 4K uh, or are okay with 30 or 60 frames a second. Those were kind of the major things that I think uh, most people are gonna care about, but there are a couple other really positive things that I liked about the camera, and one of which, and this might not be an issue for other people though, uh, was the grip. I have uh, pretty big hands, and so in the past, mirrorless cameras have presented a problem of being too small almost. And uh, one thing that I really liked about the EOS RP was that it actually has a very deep grip, and so I was able to get a good firm hold on it, and it's also tall enough I didn't feel like my pinky was like hanging off the bottom that it does on a ton of other mirrorless cameras. And that's without the optional base plate uh, grip extension that you can get for the camera. It would probably even make it more comfortable, but I didn't have one while I was shooting this. This would be a you know big thing for me actually would just be how comfortable it is compared to tons and tons of other models out there. And if you're somebody that has, is kind of a stickler for ergonomics, I'd definitely check this thing out. And speaking of how it feels in the hand, the camera uh, actually feels really solid. Uh, I am somebody that likes to take their camera with them pretty frequently and if you're somebody that's going to either travel a lot or if your camera is just like a part of your everyday carry kit, you want something that feels pretty solid and that's not going to break and a lot of other mirrorless cameras can feel kind of flimsy and fragile and of course that can be kind of concerning. The EOS RP doesn't feel like that. Actually when you pick it up, I mean there's not a whole lot of play on any of the pieces. It feels really solid in the hand. So if you are someone that's not really like someone that babies their camera and you don't always have a case for your camera when you take it places, the EOS RP might be a good option for you. Speaking of being an everyday carry item, one other cool thing with the camera was its battery life. They only gave me one battery for the week that I had it. I think I charged it up the day I got it and plopped it in there and just shot for the rest of the week with it. And while I didn't shoot thousands and thousands of images, I did kind of put the camera through its paces and really tried to use everything, the touchscreen, video, lots of autofocus, burst shooting, things like that. And it actually held up throughout the week pretty well. And it is the smaller LPE17 battery pack, not the big LPE6 that's in the like 6D and 5D, but it actually worked really well and held, like I said, held a charge throughout most of the week. And being a smaller mirrorless camera with a smaller battery, it was really surprising to see that because so many other small mirrorless cameras have notoriously had issues with poor battery life in the past. And the camera only weighs a little over a pound with a battery and memory card in it, so it's super, super light. Depending on what lens you use, of course, that might make it a lot heavier. I use the 24 to 105 L series zoom for the R mount while I did this review, and it ended up making the camera feel like a little front heavy because the camera is so lightweight and the whole thing was just a little heavier. But I also had the 35 millimeter prime during the review and that lens weighs almost nothing. And that was a really awesome like featherweight sort of combo that was just like a joy to carry around. So if you just want like one lens to have with you, there are options for that. And of course you can adapt tons of EF mount lenses to the camera as well. So if lightweight is what you're after, the RP is definitely in that category. So who is this camera for? I would say vloggers, people that take their camera with them everywhere, or anybody that is just looking to sort of upgrade from what they have if it's something entry level. It's great for vloggers because it's so lightweight, the autofocus is so, so good, 
and you have that articulating screen. And so all those factors sort of make it the perfect camera to throw on the end of a gorilla pod or something like that and film yourself or film whatever's going on around you without laying down on you, making you feel tired and just not really being a pain to use. It's just such a simple intuitive camera. It's gonna be great for those sort of everyday carry people, again, because it's lightweight, it's pretty durable, and it's just really simple. So it's not complicated. It just works really well. It does what it's supposed to do. It's a reliable camera, and I think just the form factor is great for that sort of thing. And above all, just anybody that's looking to upgrade from an entry-level camera that doesn't want to break the bank and doesn't want to jump up to like a full-size, full-frame DSLR, this is a great way to get into full-frame at like $12.99, so it's not really that big of a price jump like it has been previously with other full-frame DSLRs, and you still get a lot of the benefits of having the full-frame, like that increased image quality and things like that. So it's just a really good option for anybody that's looking to kind of take the next jump. I will say though, that if image quality is like your big, absolute number one thing, I would look at the EOS R that came out a few months ago, sort of the bigger brother to this camera. You will just get generally better image quality in terms of resolution and dynamic range with the EOS R, but still of course has a lot of the great features that the RP has. But if you are really trying to stay super, super small, the RP does that better than almost anything else I've seen. So I would recommend going down to Midwest Photo, getting your hands on it, maybe even renting it out for a weekend if you're curious about it. And of course, let me know in the comments if you have anything you like about it, if you've tried the camera, if you enjoyed your time with it. But other than that, thanks for watching. This has been my review of the Canon EOS RP mirrorless camera.